It's the Best Lifing Show. This podcast is your ultimate guide to holistic health and wellness. Our team of Best Lifers share their stories. Wait, wait, wait. What is this Best Lifing? We transform your life from ordinary to extraordinary. And help you live your dreams. So now, let's let's start start Best Lifing. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Best Lifing Show with Be Unique. My name is Julia Brodska and I'm the author of the international best-selling book, Best Lifing. And today I have beautiful Emily Saunders here with us again. Hello, Ooh, Emily. I just love it here. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? It's we so have fun. a good time. <laughs> and so what are we talking about today, Emily? Today we are talking balance. Ooh, balance. Yeah, and not like e- equilibrium balance. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not really that good with my own balance. <laughs> no, we're talking life balance. Oh, okay. Tell yeah. us more. Um, I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a hard time balancing my life, you know, when it comes to oh, yeah. work. You know, work, and I think we all know that Emily's dating. So work, dates, friends, you know, exercise, and home life, It's it's sometimes it's a little, it's, it's a task for sure. To, you How know. to get that balance, right? Exactly. All right, so let's just get straight into it then. So let's talk about what do we have to balance? What, what is it that people out there normally have to balance? Throw some at me. So my first thing is, you know, work. Obviously work is a priority. It's where I spend like, a, like the majority of my time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess it's not really a balance of work, but it's balancing everything else outside my work schedule. Right. Cool. So let's talk about a few ways that, you know, we can find some balance. So for you, Julia, what, what is balance? What is a good way to describe balance? So I think balance is really, um, if you go down to the core of it, I think that is what creating fulfillment in the seven areas of life is all about. Because there's going to be times where, you know, we're fulfilled in one area, for example, and then, you know, maybe we're really fulfilled in our relationship. uh, And then all of a sudden, at the same time, we're not so fulfilled financially, you know, maybe with COVID, a lot of people had lots of love and lots of hugs, but maybe not enough money. And so how do we really find that balance? I think, it's about having create uh, creating fulfillment in the seven areas of life and then balancing all of those and juggling that. And I think that's really yeah, the best way. Let's turn right into that. I love that aspect or I love that idea that you just got there. It, it's it's kind of funny. This company is essentially a, like rounded around balance. Yeah, right? So this is kind of perfect. Exactly. <laughs> we got you guys. So what kind of things do you do to balance your – let's talk about Emily's one in particular. So you're romantic, you're going out dating, plus you've got to work all these hours. There's so much going on. We've got podcasts. We've got you know, <laughs> social media. Yeah. Um, and then you want to hang out with your friends and you've got your cheer stuff. Tell us how you balance all of that. Okay. So for me – I'm like a really big like calendar person. I literally schedule everything into my calendar. It it kind of gives me like the be- the best peace of mind when I look at my calendar and see the structure because you know if if everything's just like all over the place, I lose track of what I'm supposed to be doing. For the most part, I really do remember, you know, if I have a hot date scheduled. Or oh yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. But Outside of that, like, I have events for cheer, I have fundraisers, I have, I don't know, the gym. Putting it into my schedule and putting it into my calendar just really helps me to, you know, stay accountable and just remember, like, you know, everything that I have coming up in that week. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely calendar management. I think that's a great tool. Um, And even today, actually, guys, for those of you listening out there, me and Emily, Emily's like, do you want to come to brunch on Sunday? And I'm like, you're going to have to send me a calendar invite as if I'm going to remember anything by Sunday. And it just (laughs) takes away that pressure and that, like, you know, having to even remember it by chucking it in the calendar um, and having that notification come up on your phone. So I'm definitely a massive fan of that one. I agree with you there. Yeah. But I want to take it back a little bit. So I think before you can even begin to create any kind of balance, you need to have a look at like who you are and what it is that you want. Because mm-hmm. I find even, I mean, and I still do, I'm not talking about just like a one-off. I still do this now because we might be in balance or in alignment um, 
through a certain stage of our life, but then lose that balance. It's the same as, you know, riding a bike. It's quite easy to lose your balance, right? Mm -hmm, And it's perfectly normal. So I want to take it back a little bit and really figuring out, you know, who you are and what you're even trying to balance. Because one thing that I'm definitely guilty of doing a lot is um, running around and just trying to, like, get everything done without even... Some of these things that I'm doing are really irrelevant to the business, to my joy, to happiness. And no wonder I've got no time to balance anything, right? Because I'm just running around like a headless chook just trying to say yes to everything. Yeah. Right? So I think the first place to start is really figuring out um, what is it that we want to balance. And I did this with Emily actually the other day and all the other team members. We did a bit of an exercise where we just went through and asked Um, 13 different questions to figure out what your true values are and having a look like what are your values socially, physically, intellectually, um, you know, what is your dream, yeah, Yeah. spiritual and all that kind of stuff. And once you know, then you can ask yourself the question when someone says, oh, hey, do you want to come out on a massive bend under the bars tomorrow night? You can really just ask yourself, is it aligned with what I want? And that is going to definitely help you in making those decisions, which then in turn means you're probably going to have to balance less things. Now, nothing wrong with if you want to go on a massive bender, as long as it's aligned with what you want, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, this like really helped me to just understand exactly, you know, what my values were, like Julia said, but also, you know, where I should spend my time. And if you want, you know, you could definitely come in and we can help you, you know, get an idea and get a sense of what your values are, just check out our website, uh, bestlifing.com, book a clarity call, and we can kind of just go through all of our different areas of life and figure out exactly where your niche is. Yeah, like that's that's exactly what we do in our clarity calls. We just determine your values in the first free clarity call that we offer, which is at bestlifing.com. So jump on there and we can help you do the same thing. All right, so tell me, since doing that, what changes have you actually gone out and implemented now knowing what your values are apparently my one of my biggest values after i did this exercise with julia is status and power and i kind of think that comes with you know who i am as a person not only but what i do for my other job i don't know if everyone knows but i'm also a cheerleader for the nfl and with that I think that's why, you know, I love attention. So the idea of status and power is really important for me. But as I did this exercise with Julia, I started doing gratitude every morning. So, you know, just open my book and write everything that I'm thankful for. And, you know, I start writing all the things that I have current that I'm thankful for. You know, my house, a car, um, all my friends, and food on the table. And then on the other side of my gratitude journal, I'll write in there, you know, things that I don't have yet, but, you know, you write them in the present. So I'm like, you know, because Emily's dating, we all know this. The first thing I always write is, I'm so thankful for my loving and successful and faithful husband. I'm so thankful for my condo on the beach, you know. So I wrote in there in my book, I wrote, I'm so thankful for my fame and fortune. And it's kind of funny because... As you write these things down, there's part of you that doesn't think it's, you know, going to happen or come to fruition, but little things have just been manifesting in my life recently, and it's kind of crazy the way it works. I actually had a casting call the other day. I didn't get the job, but that's okay, you know? It's like one foot out the door, like, leading to my future. Amazing. Um, I'm also in the process of recording a song. I'm working with... Oh, I know. I actually... Um, met this producer and I was just casually out living the life of Emily having fun she's super outgoing and bubbly when she's out (laughs) and um, I was just singing really loudly and this guy comes up to me he goes you have a beautiful voice and I was like thank you so much Um, and he goes I want you to record a song with me and I was like who are you (laughs) (laughs) and he was like oh I'm so and so I work with these really amazing amazing like recording artist and he starts naming all these artists that he's worked with and I was like if you want me to sing a song for you I that's mean, so crazy sure. but it's kind of funny how you could just manifest things like this yeah so I guess where this comes into balance is you know putting your intentions out there and just you know giving time for things that are important to you absolutely and 
And yet balancing those priority activities. I love that story, Emily. That's like my favorite story of the year so far. I just think it's crazy. It is, and it's perfect. It always works every time. That's why I brought you that gratitude journal. <laughs> they all thought I was crazy, by the way. I came into the office and I was like, guys, from now on, before we turn on the computers at work, we start doing gratitude and they're like, oh, here's Julia again with her hippie stuff. <laughs> but then, like, I mean, it, I didn't have to prove anything because I already know how the law of attraction works. Just gave the universe a call. I'm like, make sure you hook up Emily <laughs> um, and all the others at the She's office. She's for her husband. <laughs> He's coming. He's coming. Yeah, so I wanted to touch a little bit more on this uh, gratitude journaling for anyone that hasn't heard of it before. I mean, I'm sure you may have already heard of, you know, speaking out your gratitude and saying all the things that you're thankful for. But a couple of things that you really want to do while journaling or writing down your gratitude and I do really encourage you to write it down there's just a powerful difference in writing it in a book that's like magic as we yeah. refer it because you do also have to be careful what you write in there because it'll all come like it or not um that book is magic so um yeah we're pretty much write what we're currently grateful for as Emily said and what we're looking for looking for yeah and what we but we speak about it in the present tense and I just want to touch on why we do that so what happens is there was a bit of research you may have heard this story before they did um a test uh, like a neuro test on a race car driver and they put him you know in a race car and had him you know do all of that and they measured you know his brain his um heart rate like all the things that his brain and body was doing and then what they did was they did the same thing with the same person but they were simulating it on what are those devices called help me out here uh, virtual reality yeah virtual reality that's it sorry guys main technology never get along but yeah so they're simulating it on virtual reality and the uh, results were pretty much exactly the same of when he was driving the car in real life and what he was feeling uh, and then when he was doing when he was simulating it essentially and so what that does is it when we're doing it in gratitude and we're saying I'm really grateful for this we're really feeling that and then adding that to the things that you want but in the present tense you just confuse the mumbo jumbo up your brain a little bit and then like your brain doesn't know what's real and what's not but what we often do is we say um, I'm really grateful that I'm going to get this house or I'm going to get that uh, future love Instead of saying it like we've already got it and feeling like we've already got it. Mm -hmm. And what happens with that is, yeah, you're grateful that you're going to get it. And it's always going to be a going to get it kind of thing. That's what you're putting out into the universe. So just being really careful with the wording that we choose and writing it down and rereading it and really feeling it. The book also instructs you to say thank you 20 times before you start. And I suggest just doing that thank you before and after 20 times over. So you can really feel into what you're writing and saying and thinking. Because it's those feelings that's going to actually manifest it. You can't trick the universe. It knows. So if you've got a negative emotion behind it or you, you don't believe it and your energy screaming that you don't believe it, the universe knows and that's why it's not manifesting. So what you got to do is just try and get yourself onto that vibration as quickly as possible and do your gratitude and truly like live breathe and believe what you're writing even if it's not reality I love that thanks all right so moving back into balance we went on a bit of a tangent there didn't we? <laughs> uh, so yeah what, what's one tip that you can think of that you implement to create more balance so something for me that, you know, is really essential to just, you know, my overall, like, well-being, mental health, and just Emily as a whole, is I really need to make sure that I spend a day decompressing. And this really just helps keep me, you know, on task, level-headed, and it really is just a form of self-care for myself. You know, spending time for yourself, I don't know, to me is the best thing that you could ever do for yourself. You know, I love spending time for myself taking a bubble bath. I'll read a book. I'll lay in bed and do absolutely nothing and watch Netflix. Love it. But taking the time to, you know, prioritize yourself is so essential. Yeah, putting yourself first in that balance. Mm -hmm. Perfect. One thing that I think after doing that, because definitely mm -hmm. that is step number one, self-love, uh, I would say prioritize next. 
So you can cut a whole bunch of crap off your to-do list if you really take a look at it and as we said, um, make sure it's aligned with what you want and what you want to achieve. Right. Um, much easier to balance that way. Right. I guess you could just like make a little list and decide exactly what is the most essential yeah. to you and your time, right? Because at the end of the sure. day, doing things that are not, you know, in alignment with you know, your well-being or yeah. your, you know, best self, then it's just like a waste of time. A hundred percent. And then, of course, you don't feel balanced, right? If you're running around wasting your time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What's another one that you like to do? I think it's really essential to create a healthy mindset. So when I say this, it means creating a healthy mindset is so essential to, at least for me, to be able to function every day. I always have, or I'm not have to, or I'm continuously reminding myself of how awesome I am, how capable I am. I love that. You know, affirmations are so essential. I think we talked about this in a podcast previously, but for me, if I'm ever in a situation and I'm doubting myself, I sit there and I say, okay, why are you doubting yourself, Emily? What like valid reason do you have for doubting yourself? Are you scared? Yeah, you're probably scared, and that's fine, but just attack it, just go for it, you know, and I sit there and I tell myself, I say the word confidence five times in a row, and then I just get up and I go do it. By, by just forcing myself into that situation, it takes away the anxiety of, you know, what if or what could possibly happen, yeah. and it just, you know, allows yourself to take things with a grain of salt and just attack whatever it is you want to do. I love that. That's really great. I hope you know people go out after listening to this and do the same because it's a really, really great way to boost yourself as well. Um, another one for mindset, just to, add to it, I think silence and stillness and just taking at least 10 minutes a day to create some gaps in the mind, stop thinking shit, you know, and just have a break and relax like your brain and just have pure nothing instead of, you know, all that action that we usually get from social media, TV, people, emails, etc., etc. Then the next thing I would say is to plan. And I think that comes into play with the calendar, right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And planning it um, time by time. Remember we, we recently started a new exercise here at our office? Yeah, where we did. We did. Where we're um, we're planning how long something should take, what time we're aiming to do it, and that way you can see, you know, if you're on track uh, or if you're falling behind and things aren't getting done, and just really planning. Because one thing we found when we started doing this exercise is you might have this massive to-do list, and essentially because it's so big, we're just like trying to do all like the little jobs real quick so we can cross everything off our list. But then the most important jobs usually sit around. You know, and in the bucket, in the bucket, not touching it exactly. And, and we've been really like focused on that now, but also with planning, it's super important to like plan for distractions as well. That's one thing I sometimes struggle with personally. Is um, you know, my friend tells me that I try to put in 10 pounds of potatoes into a six kilo bag every day. Uh, so that's definitely not very balanced behavior, uh, nor is that a very smart plan. How many pounds fit in a kilo? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Do I look like Google to you, right? <laughs> um, we can't find out, but I'm sure that no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the next step would be, you know, just turning off all your distractions, right? Nice one, yeah. You just need to, you know, focus on what it is you're doing. That way, in the moment, you can give all your attention to exactly what you're doing. Yeah, right? Like, you you change that really well within yourself. Remember when you used to get distracted easily? Oh, I still do sometimes. But you've gotten heaps better, right? Yeah, it's a forever yeah. working job. And Julia does definitely suffer oh, yeah. this because, she, <laughs> you know, this girl had to turn off all of her notifications on her computer because she's like, all these people are distracting me and I can't yeah. focus on what I'm doing. And then how do I turn off these blimey <laughs> notifications? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's actually a really great, great point. Um, I felt so frazzled all the time with all these distractions. Um, I did. I just had to turn them off and 
by me, I mean Emily, but <laughs> <laughs> we went in and we just put everything on Do Not Disturb so that you can actually focus on what you're doing and mm. do it well, right? Yeah, absolutely. No point of half-assing something and then having to redo it all again. That sounds horrible. <laughs> Terrible idea. So last one. Um, what's one I would pick? Choose happiness. Whatever makes you feel good, go and do it. Yeah, I completely agree with that, actually. I think that might have that might be my favorite one out of all of this. You yeah. know, why are you, I don't know, one of my biggest things in my life is I just want to spend every single day doing something that I love and something that makes me happy. The, like, love my that. biggest fear in life is to hate what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. To spend my time, you know, in a dead-end job that I'm bored, that doesn't motivate me, that, like, doesn't give me purpose. Like, yeah, to and me, all the that hours. Just, that just sounds horrible. Yeah. So... Do what makes you happy. And I think it's it's definitely a different mindset than, you know, past generations where they just go to work, they do the job because they have to and they need the money, but, you know, they're not necessarily happy. But this new generation of, you know, people who are essentially going to be taking over the world are choosing happiness and choosing to do what, you know, what they want to do from themselves. And I feel like with that mindset... It's just going to make the world a better place because these people are wholeheartedly devoted to what they're doing and what they're spending their time on. I love that. Do you know? Yeah, absolutely. And when when you're living in alignment with what you want to do and your dream, then that's you're coming from an amazing place, of course. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a really great point, Emily. Uh, One thing I just wanted to add to that when we're speaking about like choosing your happy, sometimes I get asked the question like, well, how do you know what's going to make you happy? And that's what your emotions are there for, guys. Like, you've got your emotions that tell you, you know, this makes me feel good and this makes me feel happy, sad, angry, whatever, right? Um, Stressed, anxiety. And so using those as your guide or as your guidance system, right? And just choosing, like, the things that you want to do based on how you feel after doing them, not before. So that's a big one that I like to talk about as well is like sometimes we're like, ah, I can't be bothered going to the gym today or doing something that, you know, is important to you or achieving what you want. Um, Of course, yeah, before, like while you're sitting on the couch or maybe you're tired after work, it might be hard to get yourself up there. But how do you feel after doing that? Or how do you feel after hanging out with that certain person? So I want you to measure things based on how you feel after doing them, and that will help you choose happiness. I love that. Thanks. But whatever you choose to do, just make sure it is essentially, you know, adding joy and adding happiness to you because that's what life's all about. You've got to be there in that journey. You've got to feel that contrast. Um, and you just got to enjoy it all, right? Otherwise, Absolutely. what's the point of balancing anything? And so just to bring it full circle now, let's talk about balance in the seven areas of life. Ooh. So I think it's essential to, you know, kind of decide and gauge where you are in each of the seven different areas of life, right? Agreed. So the way that we do it at Best Lifing is we have a nice little wheel where we fill in how how we feel or how yeah. fulfilled we are. Yeah. Right. Exactly. How fulfilled we are in each of the seven different areas of life. It's a scale of one to 10. So you do financial, intellectual, vocational, social, relational, future, physical, physical, <laughs> and, uh, physical and spiritual. And then you kind of just write a number of where you are in that area of life. And then based on that, you can kind of, you know, work to improve or, you know, create more fulfillment in that area of life or you can kind of decrease it based on you know I think your values at the same time by decrease it you mean decrease the amount of time that you're spending on it because you're already fulfilled yeah gotcha exactly. gotcha exactly so my question to you is um when we work out fulfillment what's one thing that we sort of want to take into account and think about okay so when it comes to fulfillment Everyone, you know, has a different gauge in fulfillment. So for me, this is a really good example when Julie was explaining this exercise to me. I am not an overly spiritual person. I grew up religious. I, you know, basically it's not for me. But at the same time, it doesn't matter that I'm not overtly religious. I am still satisfied as a person where I am 
in my spiritual level. Yeah. So like, even though I'm not overtly spiritual, I can still be like a nine spiritual because I am essentially okay at perfectly okay yeah. with where I am spiritually. Exactly. Yeah, because what most people tend to do is go on there and be like, oh, spiritually, oh crap, I don't really do anything spiritual. That means I'm a zero. Well, no, we're not talking about what you know society thinks or what your mum thinks about your spirituality. We're talking about how fulfilled are you in each of the seven areas of life. And that's all we're really worried about here with this exercise. So, yeah, that's a great way to put it. Thank you, Emily. You're welcome. Alrighty. So, that pretty much brings us to the end of the show, right? Yeah. Oh, it went so fast as it always, always does. Do. Right. Okay, so guys, if you want more or you want to do an exercise with us, you can hop on to bestlifing.com and book your free clarity call with us. Uh, me and Emily will guide you through what you need to do, where are you and where you want to be in terms of fulfillment. And if it's balance specifically that you're looking for, then we'll help you find a way to get there and we'll create a tangible plan with action steps that are going to really drive your success. I love that. If you're ever in the Miami area, South Beach, we have self-love sessions. Yes, there was so much fun last Saturday. Yes, you can totally come join us and, you know, just have a great old time with us and we can, you know, kind of gauge where you are in each of the seven different areas of life. Yeah, and we also give you heaps of practical tools to take home. Um, also, we do like a gratitude session on there. Emily holds a beautiful yoga session. Mm -hmm. We provide lunch delicious and healthy for you and a nice champagne and networking at the end cool so thanks so much for joining us and we will see you next time yes next week join us again best living show bye guys bye. that's it for today thank you for joining us if you enjoyed the best life show and you want to get in touch you can find and follow us on all social platforms or visit our website bestlifing.com be sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review Till next time, mates. Stay, Stay blessed, blessed and best lifing. lifing.